In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can add images to your content and align those images to the left or to the right of the paragraphs within your content. I'm doing this on a test site and I'm going to add it as news. So I need to put in some kind of title for the news and I'm going to be using the WYSIWYG editor. We're not going to really do any coding at all. We're going to pretty much use the standard features of the editor to do the layout because content editors shouldn't need to know CSS or HTML. OK, um, on this test site, I have the simplified attachment UI option disabled, meaning attachments show underneath the WYSIWYG editor. If the simplified attachment UI option is on, then you add attachments via the image button of the editor. If you want to do advanced layout, then you want to have a simplified attachments UI off. OK, so it can be a bit fiddly to lay stuff out using the WYSIWYG editor because it's primarily designed for document processing rather than um, kind of desktop layouts, um, desktop, desktop publishing layouts. Um, the best way for us to proceed is to add text for the content first and then to add images next. So I'm going to add some, uh, I'll add a header first and then test paragraph and another one and another one. And as implied, I want this one to actually display underneath an image. So these two are going to show to the right of, the, of an image, or put another way, the image is going to be to the left of these two. And then I want this to display under the image. And the image is actually going to be larger than this amount of space. So we're going to have to do something fancy to make this go under it. OK, so. I'm going to click where I want the image to go, which is here. Um, so if you're floating something to the left or to the right, for that matter, you want it to you want to put the cursor to the left of the text it's going to be alongside. So I'm going to select a test image. And it will ask me the options, and I want to align it to the left. OK, so this is not too bad, um, but it doesn't do, uh, as discussed, it doesn't put this underneath. Um, so what we could do is we could just add some line breaks to make it display underneath, and that would work. But for a variety of reasons, which I'll explain in a moment, we don't actually want to do that. Um, when we're making web pages, we have this concept of semantics which might take a little bit of time for you to get your head around if you are used to just kind of using word processors. Um, but semantics is a really, really important concept. Um, essentially, semantics is considering the meaning of our content. Every little aspect of the content as, it, as it's coded has a meaning. So if we add some line breaks, that has a meaning. Um, Maybe it's best to consider the example of a blind user who is using screen reader software to read the website out. Um, in this case, it would read out something like header to test header image, then uh, the caption of the image. So test.png, this link will open in a new window. Then test paragraph one, test paragraph two, then line break, line break, line break, line break, line break, line break, then test paragraph under. And reading out all those line breaks is obviously not what you intended when you put them in because you were just thinking visually. But semantically, they exist and they have a meaning. So they would be read out by a screen reader. That's just one reason you shouldn't just do things in terms of how things look. And there are other reasons. For example, imagine you had a partially sighted user who had adjusted the text size to be higher, in which case this test paragraph under would appear to be much further down. So I can just simulate that by putting a larger text size. And obviously, we didn't intend to have this big gap here. Or if for some reason the text got smaller, we can consider situations where adjusting the text size adjusts where it wraps. Now, you might not consider the text ever could go smaller, but it's possible, actually. It's possible that the 
content management zone of the website or the, the WYSIWYG editor might have a larger font size than your website, the, the front page of your, the, the front end of your website might. Um, or it might be, for example, that the user is using a operating system or device that doesn't have the exact font that, you, that you've set up for your layout and the operating system uses a fallback font and that fallback font might have different sizing. Or on a Mac, it has more precise text sizing than it does on Windows. If Windows text sizing, it kind of jumps up in bigger increments. So if you, if you design on a Mac, then you might actually find on Windows that the font sizing is different. And there are various other reasons too. So all in all, we really need to consider what, what the content code means, not just how it looks. So if we can't use just line breaks, we have to think what we can use. And fortunately, Composer has something called the surround com, uh, com code tag. So if we type this in, so it's, it's a com code tag, so it's surrounded with square brackets. And we want it to end somewhere like here. Um, and what that does is it basically encloses everything between the tags as a surrounded area and this will be outside that area and it's going to clear the floated image. And there we go. And we can tune that a bit so we can take out this blank line um, and there we go. So that does exactly what we want perfectly. So the surround tag is really useful. You can see it's actually disappeared here because it's converted it into HTML. If you're technically inclined, you can look at the code and you can see it's actually using this div class equals float surrounder, which injects some CSS, which handles the surrounding case that we wanted. Okay, so that covers how to do the alignments. If we wanted to align something to the right, we can do exactly the same thing. Okay, so if we're aligning simply to the right, we still need to put the cursor to the left of the text it's aligning against, which is a little bit counterintuitive, but this is just how web browsers work. So we're going to align to the right of test paragraph A and test paragraph B, so we need to put it before those paragraphs. Okay, and as before, we need to put in a surround. So the surround is going from before the images until, um, let's put it here, until the bit where we want to create a break. And well, we're almost there. Just fix some spaces. Okay, there we go. It can be a little bit weird with how exactly spaces come in and go when it converts the com code into HTML. Or you can sometimes see some phantom spaces. It's because there's some very complicated conversions going on between um, ComCode HTML and the WYSIWYG editor. So sometimes you have to fiddle a little bit to get it right, but it does work in the end.